Uh, today I will be talking about the um, system for uh, analog filter design, realization, and verification um, using Mathematica and System Modeler platform. I was working on this as a part of my um, senior design project at the University of Southern Maine where I'm a student of electrical engineering. The, uh, I'm sorry. For some reason, I cannot move on to the, oh, here we go. So the plat I'm sorry. So the platform I uh, developed is uh, partly done in Mathematica. It's a um, package I developed with uh, different uh, functions for calculating uh, transfer function of a filter and uh, splitting it into uh, first and second order sections so that it could be uh, realized using uh, first and second order uh, circuits and uh, the circuits are developed in uh, System Modeler, different libraries of first and second order that are used as building blocks for build building a higher order circuits. So, can't. So let me start by uh, just giving you a little bit of intro uh, uh, analog filters. As you know, they are present in uh, most, um, I'm sorry, I don't, oh. As you know, they are a vital piece of uh, modern electronics and uh, they are used to, they can be found in almost every uh, piece of electronic equipment such as radios, TVs, stereo systems. They are uh, used in test equipment um, as well as in um, computer systems. Even when we are talking about um, when, the, when we talk about digital signals, when it comes to converting digital to uh, analog, they are needed to prevent uh, aliasing. The filters uh, could be classified uh, either by the frequency selectivity or by uh, approximation method. Uh, when it comes to uh, frequency, Selectivity, uh, we have four basic types, uh, low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop. And as the name suggests, um, as their name suggests, they, uh, they pass a certain type of signals of certain frequencies and uh, reject uh, the others. So as you can see, low pass will pass uh, low pass, low frequencies and reject the rest, so on, by approximation method. Uh, what does that mean, approximation method? Um, these pink uh, rectangles actually represent uh, ideal uh, filter response. Uh, of course, in practice, we don't have that. So approximation met method really uh, tells us how close is a certain response to ideal to ideal one. So of those, uh, we have uh, four major categories. There's a Butterworth, Chebyshev, inverse Chebyshev, and uh, elliptic. There is a few others, but uh, I will be dealing with these four today. And uh, 
below, we show the uh, magnitude, uh, squared magnitude response of uh, different uh, approximations. And you can see Butterworth has the flattest, uh, flattest magnitude in the pass band. Uh, Chebyshev have a ripple. And an inverse Chebyshev has a ripple in the stop band, while elliptic uh, has a ripple in both stop band and pass band. Another important concept when it comes to filter is a transfer function, which um, basically tells us the relationship between the input and the output. So as I said, uh, transfer function gives us information about the uh, relationship between output and the input, ratio between output and the input, the filter. And in its factor form, it looks like this, where uh, Zs from 1 to n represent uh, zeros of the polynomial. And in denominator, uh, P, the, the, are, these are poles of the denominator. Poles or zeros, they can be uh, real or complex. If they are complex, they will always be a complex conjugate. That way, um, these would be uh, rational functions. And then square magnitude response of all these four major types of filter are given in the following form where um, a n squared this function of omega is a polynomial of order 2n and it is specific to each of one of these uh, filters where um, T of n is the Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind, and R of n is a elliptic rational function. And uh, the transfer function above, here it is given in its uh, factored form, but um, it could also be uh, split into a second order section or uh, second order product of second order polynomials, first and second order polynomials. And uh, this is the table of um, second order filter responses where uh, omega zero represents uh, pole frequency, which is the magnitude of the, these poles. And uh, Q is a also called quality factor, Q factor, which uh, represents the ratio between this uh, magnitude and the real part of the pole. And it also tells us, um, tells us a little bit about the peaking in the magnitude, if there will be a peaking in magnitude response. So these are just uh, responses of all four types of filter standard response, responses. And this is what I uh, used to transfer this form of uh, transfer function factored form into uh, first and second order sections. So these um, first and second order sections uh, are used to build a higher order filters or a cascade of these sections um, would represent a higher order filter. And to design a filter, this is uh, what is normally given as a specification. We have a passband and uh, stop band frequency as well as uh, pass band ripple and the stop band attenuation. So based on this, the specification is supposed to design a filter. So the next step in the process is uh, 
of course, we would choose a approximation, Chebyshev, Butterworth, elliptic. And based on that, we would construct a transfer function. We would calculate poles and zeros, determine the filter order, determine omega, which is a pole frequency and the Q factor. And then um, we would create those second order sections, first and second order sections that can be cascaded further into a higher order. This, uh, when this is done, uh, certain care has to be taken because um, when we are talking about uh, realistic op amps, um, we have to take into consideration um, the physical limitation of the of the uh, devices, and as to not uh, to um, go over to stay within the dynamic range, the sections should be ordered in uh, should be arranged in the order of increasing uh, quality factor, and this is what I've done, and uh, gain should also be optimized so that the voltage level at the output of each section is equal to the output of the, the level of, at the last section. And also when it comes to uh, poles and zero pairing, uh, nearest ones should be paired. This is all done to uh, stay within the dynamic range so that the signal Amplitude doesn't go out of the range, uh, prescribed range for the certain amplifier. And the next step is to transfer these, transfer these uh, second order and first order functions into an electrical uh, circuit. And uh, we would calculate, determine the resistor and capacitor values based on circuit, topolo circuit topology. And uh, topologies, I implemented in this are some of the most common uh, single amplifier biquads, such as selling key and multiple feedback, and also uh, some little more complicated circuits, such as state variable, Tau Thomas, Bainter, Bachter, and of course I include first order sections as well as uh, inverter and voltage divider that we would use for uh, gain adjustments. And finally, uh, simulation and analysis. The libraries of these first and second orders systems were created in System Modeler. And as I said, we will be using them as building blocks for higher order filter implementation. And finally, we would uh, test and verify that the filter uh, satisfy the specifications given at the beginning. And all of this we can do with System Modeler in Mathematica. Right now, um, in Mathematica, these are the existing uh, functions. So we have a transfer, we can obtain a transfer function. Let's say we want to build elliptic filter model, low pass. This is the pass band, stop band frequency. This is the uh, pass band ripple, 1 dB, and 30 dB uh, stop band attenuation. And here is our transfer function. And we can factor it, but uh, that still doesn't, uh, that still doesn't uh, give us what we need to build, uh, to build that circuit. We can recognize that uh, there are uh, conjugate poles and zeros. We can even, uh, Mathematica has a built-in function, calculate poles and zeros. And we can also determine that we need a fifth order system, but we don't know, uh, so we would need one first order section and two second order sections but we don't know which zeros, let's say, to pair with which poles. 
and what are the gains of each section? How are we going to distribute the gains? So that's not something Mathematica can do for us. But, um, so let's take a look at this uh, package. This is just loading the package, and here, let's see what functions we have. So, filter cascade, it's the main, main function. We would uh, enter a specification, which would be the same specification as a uh, Mathematica function uses for elliptic, Butterworth, Chebyshev filter models. So it would have a type of a filter and uh, frequency range and attenuation here. We would also pick a response, meaning the approximation method. We would specify if we need Butterworth, Chebyshev, and so on. And finally, gain, which is optional. If not specified, it would just assume uh, zero dB gain. What else do we have here? We can calculate um, pulse frequency quality factors. Gain order of a system, and uh, each uh, topology, filter topology, has its um, function and the role of this. Let's click on cell and key, let's see. So we would pick, we would enter type of the system we need. We wish to gain, would enter the pole frequency, Q factor, and uh, would pick a capacitor and resistor, and this filter would return the components of the rest of the circuit. Also, um, the function apply and simulate. Here we would enter the list of parameters we calculated with one of the topology functions. Enter the model name that we have in System Modeler, the input function, or more than one if we want, simulation time, and uh, we would also enter tolerance because um, the selling key and the rest of the topology calculations, they are when they are done, they uh, give us exact values, but um, in practice, we would use uh, standard resistor values. So we would enter uh, prescribed tolerance, let's say 5% resistors or 1%, 1 and then the, this function would run, uh, would simulate the circuit with both exact and standard values and then compare uh, the results, see how sensitive the circuit is to change in elements. So let's try. Uh, we'll need to wrap this up in the next oh, minute or two. We'll okay. Up. Just, okay, just a quick example. So here we have a specification. We would like a low pass filter following pass band, stop band, and say we want uh, elliptic filter model, and this is what uh, what we get with the filter cascade. So we have a number of a filter order, we have number of stages, we would need three stages. We have overall transfer function, and then um, the sections of first and second orders. Here we have gain of each section, optimized gain, zero frequencies, full frequencies, and the Q factors. 
So this shows the individual stages transfer function and the Bode plot of each individual stage. And let's say we would pick Bainter circuit realization. So, unfortunately, I wanted to show you um, system model. So here we have a filter of, uh, we have a library of filters. So we will be using this, the Bainter filter. This is the component view. <laughs> so we, as we saw, we need um, fifth order filter, three stages. So we will need one single pole, pole and then second and third stage, we pick the Bainter topology. No, I didn't execute. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's see. So finally, after the component values are applied, Fine. Um, yeah, that's all right. Uh, so anyway, um, the improvements that uh, we were hoping to make with the system modeler four, now we would be able to create models from Mathematica environment, which would exclude the drag and drop uh, movements. And uh, also we would be able to con also apply connecting existing models programmatically. And um, hopefully uh, we'd be able to um, implement realistic op -amp models in Mathematica, compare that to ideal model. And I apologize for the lane. <laughs>